first trip to Italy, first backpacking trip in over five years, so pretty excited, a little bit apprehensive to be honest, but we'll go, oh, I'll explain my apprehension um, a little bit later in the video. Um, but in terms of the activities that I'm doing on this trip, it, it's probably the most diverse in terms of what I already know that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing some diving in the Malfi. One of my best friends, Mel, is getting married in Tuscany. And at the end of the trip, we're going to be hiking through various altitudes of the Italian and the uh, Swiss Alps. The logic is that as long as everything fits into this backpack tonight, then I'm going to be good for the rest of the trip. The backpack that I'm using is my Nixon Origami XL. I'm super upset that Nixon stopped making these because this is honestly the best backpack I've ever used. If anyone from Nixon's watching, start pumping these out again because they were and are amazing. There's only one way to find out if it all fits into this bag and that's just to fucking do it. So let's get started. That was easy. Um, I've got the drone in there at the moment. The drone won't be in there when I'm traveling. It's going to go into my day bag. Airport in the morning. Can't wait. Seoul, see you first. Italy, see you soon. So it's been five years since my last backpacking trip. Um, and I mentioned before that there was a little bit of apprehension about what this trip is going to turn out like. Because it's been five years since I walked into a dorm room. Five years since I made a corner of the dorm room mine for my belongings. Picked my top bunk, and yes, I'm a top bunker by choice, and ran the nighttime gauntlet of possibilities that is hostel dormitory life. And on top of that, there's been five years of personal growth. We've been through a global pandemic in that time, and a lot's changed. I'm a different person. I'm getting older. I'm unsure if I can still do this slumming, backpacking, hosteling life. But one thing that I know remains unchanged and stands the test of time, and always will, it's the airport beer. It's 7 a.m., but fuck it. <sighs> Airports are built different. God, it's amazing what a couple of airport pints does to your perspective. Hostels are what they are. They're random, they're fun, they're vibrant, and you just might have someone piss on you every now and again. And it is what it is. So bring it on. 63,001. I changed whatever cash I had on me, and this is what I've got. I've got no idea what it can buy me, but let's just hope it gets me into the center of town. Surprisingly, the lunch and dinner on the budget airline, Asiana, was fairly good. They had bim beef bibimbap for lunch, which they served with kimchi and gochujang. That was quite lovely, for airline food at least. And then dinner, disappointingly, didn't have any kimchi or gochujang, but it was chicken with broccoli and rice. Unlike other times I've had chicken on airlines, it was real chicken and it was real broccoli and the rice was actually fairly well cooked. I'd give it 75 out of 100 um, because it was airline food, which generally is pretty tasteless, but it was quite nice. So I met a bunch of foreigners before who showed me my way to my hostel. Super lovely, some Belgian, some French, Spanish, Italian. And then I asked them where the hell I get good Korean fried chicken. And they said this place. I'm distinctly feels like a Muslim area. Everything's halal. That restaurant that I just went into where I ordered my chicken from is full of um, people from countries that I reckon would be of Muslim background. Uh, super interesting area. Didn't know somewhere like this would exist in Seoul. But anyway, the chicken's being prepared. Let's see how it goes. I've been told only take away, so I've got to eat this on the street. I'm eating in my private dining area on the street. First impressions, not that crispy. Mm. Only okay. The chicken's relatively crisp. I think it's a little bit overspiced. I think you can taste cumin in it as well. Which is not a bad thing, but just not what I'd expect from Korean fried chicken. Just the pass mark, 50 out of 100. Yeah, after that wildly disappointing fried chicken, I think I want some Korean food. I think I found the spot. Yeah. 
이제 뭐 했지? 그 운전병 낯선 있어. 걔가 내 옆자리 옆에 바로 옆자리. 그, 나 그때 핸드폰 있을 때라서 이제 말에 숨겨졌어. 네이드 딱. 아, 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 아
Before this part from Itaewon. Itaewon, yeah, to the airport. And then I came out there. But where? how do I get to the airport line without coming out? To this part is and buy another one. But then, but I've already paid to get to the airport. Do you know what I mean? I've already... Yeah, but I already paid to go to the airport. But I'm not at the airport. But, but I paid to go from Itaewon to Incheon Airport. Does that make sense? I made, but I'm, I'm only from Itaewon to Yong, Yongdok now. So just buy another ticket. Okay. That was a fucking struggle. So I bought a ticket from Itaewon to Incheon Airport, but in order to change to the airport line, I have to come out of that boom gate, which voids my ticket. So I'm... Sydney to Seoul, done. Next up, Seoul to Barcelona. And so begins my 12 hour long vigil inside Barcelona airport. Couple of surprises for that flight. Number one, dinner that we had on uh, the H1 Airlines flight from Seoul to Barcelona was possibly the best airline dinner I've ever had. We had betel beef wraps um, with beef bulgogi. Uh, gochujang kimchi obviously was in that meal. Fucking amazing. Um, the second surprise is I watched The Intern. Bloody good movie that. Fuck, really, really, really liked it. Um, yeah, big surprise. Now to find a nice comfortable spot in this airport. <laughs> 